Good morning, St. James. It's Sunday, June the 7th, Trinity Sunday, the first Sunday after Pentecost. We will be using an order of service that you can find in a link right below this video. Open that up and print it out and you can follow along with us. On page two, blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all Our desires, desires known, and, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship, and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, 
plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our canticle is canticle 13, a song of praise. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will, we will praise, praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will, we will praise, praise you and highly exalt you forever. Our second reading is from 2 Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ 
the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, the Lord Christ. Christ. In the church calendar year, this is Trinity Sunday. This is always an interesting day to preach, I gotta admit. Many of my clergy friends and I sometimes drag our feet a little bit when it comes to sermon writing for today. It's a tough one, trying to explain in about 15 minutes or so a mystery that we have been working to unravel for thousands of years. And then there are the events of the world right now, the world that's happening around us. And we have not been working on those events anywhere near as long, but the diseases we face, both physical and spiritual, are proving equally hard to unravel. And one could argue they are even harder to preach about than the doctrine of the Trinity. So let's see if we can tackle these together, shall we? First, the Trinity, this idea of the, that God is three in one. We know from the Gospel of John that God is in Jesus and Jesus is in God and that they are one. And we know from elsewhere in John that God is spirit. And we know from last week's Gospel reading that Jesus left the Holy Spirit with us as an advocate and as the presence and power of God in the world. But the plot thickens. We know from the first letter of John that this being we call God is love. And we know from Matthew and Mark, who lean pretty heavily on the books of Deuteronomy and Leviticus, that we are to love this God and love others as we love ourselves. And we know from today's reading of the letter to the Corinthians that this love that we have for our God and for our neighbors is really the greatest of all gifts. And finally, in today's Gospel from Matthew, Jesus gives us that tidy little nomenclature, these words that seem to roll off our tongues, and he tells us that we are to use these words, this description of this three-in-one God when we baptize. And so we do. To this day, we baptize in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. But just because we say these words doesn't mean we have a clear and concise handle on what they mean. Oh sure, theologians have been at this for centuries. Thanks to them, we have ideas like substance and essence of God. This doctrine that was developed and approved all the way back in the fourth century that we still rely on today when we say in our creed that Jesus is of one being with the Father. Yet one of the great frustrations in life is that we human beings are limited. We have limited experiences and we're trying desperately to describe or discuss or refer to a being who is in fact limitless. Words fail us, and they probably should fail us. 
We have only our own limited experiences, our own understanding of the world and how it works, our own paltry language to try to talk about a God who is infinite. Despite the best efforts of the theologians throughout the centuries, words fail us. Of course, I have heard about this one God, three persons thing my whole life. I remember from my own Sunday school experiences the explanations by my teachers that ranged from an egg, the shell, the yolk, the white, separate, but when taken together, they're a whole egg, which frankly, anyone who's ever made an omelet can tell you it doesn't really work as a metaphor for an everlasting God, because in order to make that omelet, you have to break the eggs and throw away the shells. And pretty sure we're not really allowed to separate and throw away one of the members of the Trinity, so it doesn't really hold up. Or there's the example that was my personal favorite of the three lit matches, and that is held apart, there are three flames, held together, there are one flame, three, one. I remember that lesson like it was yesterday. When we talk about big ideas like this, though, we can only use the knowledge and the language that we have. Someday I'll tell you the story about my son when he was five years old explaining the Trinity in terms of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. He did a pretty good job of it, if you want to know the truth. He could understand and describe this impenetrable and indescribable idea using something that he knew and he understood. That's like us. When we want to talk about, well, virtually anything, we're limited to, in doing so by the limits of our experiences and our language. The bigger the idea, often the greater gap between that idea and how well we can talk about it. Some would say that the best of our everyday language can do is to capture the idea of the Trinity by noticing that it is, in fact, a relationship. That these three persons interact with each other and with us in a bond of love. It's interesting to think that at the very heart of, the very core of, the very essence of God, is a relationship. When we were baptized, we were baptized into that ongoing and everlasting relationship. And we make some promises. Perhaps those promises were made for you a very long time ago before you even knew what was happening. But every chance we get, we revisit and renew those baptismal promises. When you take a look at those promises, you see that this same relationship of love lived out between this triune God and us. In fact, in a very real way, our baptismal covenant is a blueprint or a plan or a path that we walk down and that when we follow it, it leads us more and more deeply into this relationship of love. In that covenant, that blueprint, we first promise to continue learning and praying. We promise to resist the forces that draw us out of that relationship of love and further promise that if we forget or we wander off, we will turn back and we will be folded into God's loving embrace. We promise that the world will be able to see and hear about this God who is love just by listening to what we say and watching how we act. We promise to look for that spark of divine love in each person that we meet and love them as we love ourselves. And then there's la one last promise, perhaps one that calls us more deeply this week than ever before. We promise to be justice seekers and peacemakers. We promise to recognize and honor and defend the dignity of every human being. That's a pretty tall order. That's a pretty tall order even when disease is not causing us to withdraw into the safety of isolation. It's a pretty tall order even when people are not dying in custody. It's a pretty tall order even when there are no protesters or looters on the streets. 
even when history doesn't seem to be coming to a moment of reckoning, even when words like privilege and racism and Black Lives Matter don't cause us to jump to defensiveness or even anger. Here we go again, my friends, with ideas that are big and hard to describe or understand. Words fail us because all we have is our own knowledge and our own language to fall back on. Honestly, I think that that's a huge part of the problem today. Each come to this conversation, to this relationship, relying solely on our own experiences and our own words. When we hear words from others trying their very best to describe to us what their experiences are like, we sometimes react with defensiveness or maybe even worse, dismissiveness. But the only way forward is to first acknowledge that this, that all of this, everything, is one big, holy, infinite relationship. We are in a relationship of love that we call God. We are in the relationship of love that describes us, all of us, as children of God. We are in this together. Our reading from Genesis reminds us that humanity was made in the image of God. And the only way forward, the only path that is open to us is to see that image of God in each and every one and to intentionally make room for, to truly hear the experiences that others have so that we can begin to truly understand the words they use to describe them. Those baptismal promises that we hold are bigger than our paltry limited experiences. The promises we made are bigger than our personal understanding of how the world is, is or even how the world should be. The promises that we made call us to stop and to still our own voices long enough to hear the voices of others. The promises we made call us to have the courage to change change the way we think and change the way we act and maybe most importantly change the way that we see others the promises we made to this triune god who is love who is spirit who is relationship who invites us into that loving circle the promises we made to this god give us courage to look at each other and every person black or white liberal or conservative, silent or protesting, and see and honor that dignity written deeply within them by our loving God. How's that work exactly? How do we make that work? How do we talk about this one God, three persons, bound together in this perfect relationship of love and acknowledge that we are called to worship and to serve this God of love in each human being that we meet and reconcile somehow all of that with what is going on in our world right now and in the midst of all of that, face up to our own role in that. Has the God that is an ongoing, everlasting word of love that has, that has been spoken and that continues to be spoken through all time and space, has this God of love finally become fed up with us and decided to leave us to the whim of viruses too small to see and injustices too pervasive to admit? Or instead, have we given up on God? Have we turned our backs on those made in God's image who are on this same ongoing, everlasting, loving journey of a relationship with us. I believe this God of love is calling us through the experiences that we're having in the world today, calling us out of our silence, calling us beyond our defensiveness, calling us past what some inflammatory website or press conference or tweet incites us to believe, calling us to a holy reckoning and an enlightenment, 
calling us to a willingness to listen deeply and courageously to the anger and the fear and the sorrow of those human beings who bring different words and different experiences into this relationship. I pray that you will join with me in acknowledging our own limited understanding and in seeking to expand that understanding. I pray that we will do that not by digging in, but by having the courage to step out of our own comfort zones, by seeking to hear what others have been trying to tell us of their own experiences for hundreds of years, and by using the power of this indescribable triune God to live into our promises. When we do so, we can make a difference in the lives of those other human beings who are also made in God's image and whose dignity and honor we have promised to respect. Kevin tells me that the motto for Cairo's prison ministry is, listen, listen, love, love. Maybe all of us can make that our motto this week. Listen, listen, love, love. Let us renew our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In grief and in undaunted hope, let us cry out to God, the undivided Trinity, saying, Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. God, your church is splintered and sorrowful. We are undone by the virulence of the age into which you have called us. <clears throat> We hunger for the bread only you can give. We long for the solace of an absence and grace. Gather us close. Hide us under the shadow of your wings and strengthen us to be your ministers amidst the uncertainties that lie ahead. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. God, our nation is diseased. A pandemic has brought us to our knees, but we have been kneeling before false gods for too long. Economic and environmental injustice, systemic racism, the vainglory of unexamined consumption. We need you, the divine physician, to heal the heart wounds we cannot see so that we might heal the broken bodies and broken systems we can see. 
Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. God, the world is so vast and so small. We are overwhelmed by its complexities, yet we are reminded how tightly our lives are knit together. The lie of exploitation has laid west, waste to our planet and has oppressed our siblings in every land. Lead us out into the wilderness beyond self-satisfaction, beyond denial, beyond plunder, and teach us new ways to live simply, humbly, close to the earth. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. God, our communities are being crushed by the yoke of sin. Political enmity, economic inequality, gun violence, racism, xenophobia, disparities in health and education, pollution, loneliness, and despair. Our brothers and sisters are sleeping in the streets, weeping in the streets, bleeding in the streets, like strangers in their own land. So many of us choose to look away. Give us instead your easy yoke, your light burden, to open the doors, to step out, to speak out, to trust one another, to be taken where we do not wish to go, to the foot of the cross, to the tomb where you will meet us, where real life begins. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. God, our loved ones are sick and dying from viruses and from violence. We are weak and helpless, but don't allow us to be hopeless. Make your presence known to us, especially when we cannot be present to one another. Heal our ailments and mend our hearts. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy, Have mercy on us. us. God, so many have been taken away. We say their names so that they won't be forgotten. We say their names so that we won't be the type of people willing to forget. As we grieve and grasp the mystery of death, take their names and bind them to yourself. Open your everlasting gates and welcome them home. Holy God, Holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have, Have mercy, mercy upon us. us. God, so many, no, pardon me. God of our sorrows and our joys, we lament today so that we might rejoice tomorrow in your promise of justice, of healing, and of never ending life. For you are the one in whom all things are made new. And it is you whom we turn to in trust through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the love that is creating us, and the love that is healing us, and the love that is sustaining us, be in you, and with you, and through you, for your healing, and the healing of the whole world. And may the blessing of God, the one, holy, and undivided Trinity, be upon you and abide with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Before our dismissal, I just have two very quick announcements. One is we're still collecting names and information about graduates so that we can honor them in our bulletin. So please email those into the parish office. And if you have not yet filled out your COVID survey, there's one last chance to do so. And so we encourage you to click on the link that is on the website, on the church website. Uh, there's a little link that says, take me to the COVID survey. You click on that and it's about a five minute survey. We'd really appreciate hearing from all of you. Thank you very much. Alleluia, alleluia, let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. Thank mm -hmm. you.